Good afternoon. My name is Rick Ron. I'm a special agent in charge with the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here today and we wanted to pass along some information to you as well as the community and um, the nation as a whole. Behind me I have representatives from the uh, Iowa Department of Public Safety, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the Powersheet County Sheriff's Office. What I'd like to do first is read a brief statement to you and then after that I'll be happy to take as many questions as I can. A first-degree murder charge was filed today in connection with the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts, who was last seen jogging in Brooklyn, Iowa on July 18, 2018. A complaint and affidavit names Christian Bahina Rivera, age 24, who resides in rural Powasheet County and he has been charged with murder in the first degree. Dozens of law enforcement officials from local, state, and federal agencies were involved in the investigation after the disappearance of Molly Tibbetts. A body was discovered early this morning in a farm field southeast of Brooklyn, Iowa. The identity has not been confirmed, however, we believe it to be the body of Molly Tibbetts. A complaint and affidavit, which will be provided to you, will provide the details and of allegations against Mr. Rivera. Charges were filed in the Powersheet County District Court the case will be prosecuted by the Iowa Attorney General, General's Area Prosecution Division and first degree murder carries a penalty of life without the possibility of parole. And I'll be happy to answer as many questions as I can. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. We have confirmed with Homeland Security Investigations that he is an illegal alien and we believe he has been in this area now for four to seven years. How did, you, how did you come into contact with him? How did he get on your radar? Well, during the investigation, we reached out to the public, as you well know. And during our neighborhood canvas, we came across an individual that had security cameras. We took those cameras. He was kind enough to give us the footage from it. And through that, we were able to identify a vehicle that uh, we believe belonged to Mr. Rivera. It was a black Malibu. And from that, we were able to track his pattern and the, the routes in which he took. We are also able to find Molly running on this video, and we are able to determine that he was one of the last ones to have seen Molly running based on the video, again, that we were able to seize from the general public. I'm sorry. Well, again, we were able to pull him in during the investigation. We conducted a lengthy interview with Mr. Rivera. And during that interview, he tells us that he sees Molly running and was able to uh, come upon her, approach her. And while he was interfacing with her, he actually tells us that he ran alongside of her or behind her. And then at one point, he tells us that Molly grabbed a hold of her phone and said, you need to leave me alone. I'm going to call the police and then she took off running. He in turn chased her down. And then he tells us that at some point in time he blacks out and then he comes to near an intersection in which we believe he then placed Molly. Do you believe that he raped her or attacked her? I'm sorry? Where did this happen? What street? On 385th Street. In what town? In Brooklyn, outside of Brooklyn actually, in the rural county, just outside of Brooklyn, Iowa. This side over here, uh, that general area has been searched by investigators Specifically to this area today, this morning. On 385th Street yeah. or the location of Molly? Because they're two different locations. The location where Molly's remaining. Actually, after we got done interviewing Mr. Rivera, he led us to her location. And that location was near 460th Street or Avenue in uh, rural Powsheet County. Any information on how she was killed? Uh, we aren't able to release all the information in the investigation. And so I hope you understand that I can't give everything out. And that is one of the things that we're not able to provide at this time. Investigators have been searching this area I'm sorry? Again, I'm not going to be able to provide certain information. That is one of which I'm not able to provide. I had a question? Investigators have been searching this area for weeks. Why was she not found before? Why did it take this suspect to leave into her body? Well, I'm sure you've driven around the area, and it's, it's a rural county. And there are a lot of fields, a lot of woods, a lot of ditches. We have certainly 
had extensive searches throughout the county. We just didn't have success locating her. In this particular case, she was found in a cornfield and there were corn stalks placed over the top of her. And so we just weren't able to locate her at, at that particular part of the investigation. Yes. Well, we got the, the video um, a, a week or two ago, and we spent hours going through the video trying to, first of all, locate Molly on it. Secondly, see if there's anything suspicious uh, following Molly, which is what we did. And so um, we, we, again, spent hours going through that. Officers did a great job coming up with the timeline. I mentioned to you last week that we felt very good about our timeline. That just confirmed our timeline that we had. And then, again, we were able to determine what vehicle was following Molly. We identified that vehicle belonging to Mr. Rivera, and then we located him, interviewed him, and subsequently he led us to How her location. How long have you been talking to him? You said two weeks ago you got this video. How long have you been talking to the suspect before you finally- uh, We first approached him? Mr. Rivera yesterday. Can you put up a fight at all when you guys approached him? No, he's very compliant. He was willing to talk with us, and so there was no, as you said, fight. There's no fight or any struggle of any kind. Does Mr. Rivera have a criminal background, any charges in his past? Again, I won't be able to release some of that information at this time. Have you been using a translator to speak to him? Yes. Is he from Mexico? We believe he is, yes. His name, again, his name will be listed on the uh, complaint and affidavit along with the photograph, so we can provide that for you later. Have you been talking to him until can't really speak to that at this point. As I mentioned to you before, we're doing uh, some more interviews. We're trying to get as much background on Mr. Rivera as possible. And so I don't have all the answers for you on that, but um, I know that he was working. And um, beyond that, I'm not sure what he was doing, coming and going. Do you think he was aware of Molly before? Again, there are certain, certain parts of the investigation I will not be able to release, and that happens to be one of them I won't be able to speak on. If you had a question here? What about the reward money? I'm sorry? What happens now with that reward money that was collected by crime stoppers? That's not for me to say. I don't, I don't play a role in that, so I'm not sure what will happen with the, with the money or the reward. Did you say this is the first time he had seen Molly Tibbetts or was Casey with stopping her previously? I can tell you that he tells, tells us that he had seen her before, but beyond that I won't be able to say any more about his uh, interactions with Mrs. Tibbetts. These are hard. I mean, we get to know the family. We get to know Molly. Um, we just spoke with the family and I told them that uh, they raised a great daughter. I mean, she was a phenomenal individual. And so we are saddened for the family. It, it is difficult on the investigators. However, that's what we're paid to do. And we try to do it as best as we possibly can. We're just happy that we're able to uh, locate him, get him charged and then hopefully come out with a successful conclusion, that being a conviction. As we understand it, based on our investigation, he followed her around, circled around a couple of times, located her, and then began to uh, interface with her at some point in time on 385th Street. I'm sorry? Well, they're appreciative that we're able to find her, but obviously it's difficult. It's hard on them. They're struggling like any family would, but uh, they have a great support system. And we will, they have, part of that support system is the community. Now I have to say that the community here has been phenomenal. They have been of great assistance to the investigation and to the family. And so they, they will get through it, I'm sure. It's going to be hard, but we will be there for them. Yes. I'm sorry. Well, the location where she was found is on 460th, and uh, we believe the running route in which she was running was on 385th Street, yes. Again, there are certain things I won't be able to release on the investigation. Yes. 
Well, we know that she was abducted on the 18th, and beyond that, we wouldn't be able to provide that information. How surprised did uh, the house I can't speak. I mean, I, I don't know what he was thinking and what his mind process was, so I can't really speak to that. I mean, um, yeah, I don't have an answer to that. Yes, sir. I know you can't uh, talk specifically about the motive, but what can you tell us about the motive and how a young 20 year old innocent girl is now dead? So you're asking me about the motive? Well, again, I can't really speak about the motive, as you, as you said. I can just tell you that um, it seemed that he followed her and uh, seemed to be drawn to her on that particular day. And for whatever reason, he chose to abduct her. So that's, I can't speak other than that. Sir, did you detect any signs of a struggle? Did you see any bruises on Molly's body? Uh, do you believe she may have been raped? Can't speak to that as well because we don't want to be able to release that information at this time. I can tell you that an autopsy was going to be performed. That'll assist us. That autopsy is going to take place tomorrow up in Ankeny at the state medical examiner's office. And so we will rate, await those results. Uh, sometimes that takes a while, and uh, that'll aid us as well in the investigation. How long do you think she was dead for? I can't speak to that as well. Again, that goes with the state medical examiner's uh, examination of Molly. Is that surveillance video the break in the case? I mean, for a month, we've been asking the public for tips and help. Without that video, we maybe never know what happened to Molly. The video was critical. I'll put it that way. Uh, again, we have talked to hundreds of people. Over 4,000 leads came in on this investigation, and so uh, it, it was extremely helpful, let's put it that way. Is Mr. Rivera someone who was well known in the community? Did, did a lot of people know him, or did he kind of keep to himself? As I understand, he pretty much kept himself. Did he face any previous deportation order? That would be a, a question to be answered by the Homeland Security investigation, not I. He, he was employed here, and again, as I previously mentioned, he was here, we believe, anywhere between four to seven years, but beyond that, I don't have any additional information. Can you indicate yes, sir. Did you have a question? Do you believe that he acted alone involved Well, the investigation is ongoing, like I said, and we will continue to uh, look at a number of different individuals and people, continue to collect facts, and at this point, though, I can tell you he's the only one that has been charged with first-degree murder. So I know you said that you can't say anything. I would choose not to do that at this point, no. Is he being held here in the jail or at the ICE facility? Here at the Powell Sheet County Jail. Okay. Yes, sir. Did it seem like you placed the body there immediately, or did you try to conceal it elsewhere prior? Again, those are certain facts that I wouldn't be able to release at this time. Um, as I previously mentioned, we continue to run out leads, we continue to gather facts, we continue to analyze evidence, and we'll be able to have some of those questions for you as things go on. i got about one more question for you. I'm sorry. Autopsy is scheduled for tomorrow. However, it takes a while to get the results, and so that might take anywhere up to four to six weeks. We just can't predict that, but um, the the autopsy will be tomorrow. We talk so much about the Fitbit. Is that helpful at all? I, I can tell you that we, as I have said previously, that we examined her digital footprint, and certainly that played a role in our investigation. One last question, and that's it. Well, certainly it would help to, to run with others, not to run alone. But I mean, this is a small community. Everybody knew everybody. And, and certainly she has been running for months, years, and, and not had any problem that we're aware of. And so uh, this is sadly a, a, a tragic event. And uh, we hope that it wouldn't occur uh, anytime in the near future. Thank you.